الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد The topic in hand today is in regards to being miserly and stingy in the love of wealth As we know that this is a great disease of the heart from one of the many diseases There are many diseases of the heart and this one being miserly, being stingy, and having the love of wealth, it goes hand in hand. Because only a person can be stingy when he has love of something, when he has love for something. So a person, a person who is stingy, a person who is bakhil, he is miserly, can be only done and done when a person has love towards something. And when a person has love of wealth, as the Prophet says in the hadith, that Ala inna dunya hulwatun khadra wa inna Allah ta'ala mustakhlifukum fiha fayanzura kayfa ta'amalun. That this entire dunya that we see, it's delusional, right? That we see the greenery and we see the, 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 the beauty of this dunya. But the Prophet says that Allah Ta'ala has kept you here in this dunya so that he may see what you do, how you act, what do you do with your life. So then the Prophet says, fear two things. I tell you to fear two things. The Prophet said, fear the dunya. Meaning the beauty of this dunya, the luxuries of this dunya. Fear this. Meaning the wealth. A person tries to accumulate and bring in more and more. And the miserly, a person who is a bakhil, a person who is a stingy, he doesn't live a good life and he doesn't let anyone else live a good life. And as they say, that a person who is a bakhil, a person who is a stingy, he lives his life like a poor person. He lives his life like a poor man. But he will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a wealthy person. He lives his life as a poor person. But on the day of judgment, Allah Ta'ala will question him like a wealthy person because he accumulated so much. He didn't even use it upon himself. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ says in the hadith that when he's about to leave from this world, a person who is bakhil and is stingy, when he's about to depart from this world, he has so much regret. He has so much regret because all of his hard earnings, all of his wealth that he is leaving behind, he looks at it. And he's seeing that now I cannot do anything with this anymore. It's already been gone to others. It's already been distributed to others. So with a lot of regret, he looks at all of his hard-earned wealth. The Prophet ﷺ said that he cannot go to it, he cannot attain it, he cannot get it. So it becomes a very great difficulty for him and for the angel of death to snatch his ruh away from his body. Because he's attached himself so emotionally and physically to that thing, to his wealth, that now he is not ready to give up his life. On the other end, it is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his life may be taken away. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the angel of death. He tries his best to pull his soul into his body, but the angel of death takes his soul out. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that is a, the result of a person who is stingy. That his entire life, his entire earnings, his entire time and his entire effort went towards the dunya, went towards the world. So now he is so emotionally attached to it. He is so emotionally connected to it. He is not ready to give it up. So it becomes a very bad experience for this person at the time of his death. That's why the Prophet ﷺ has explained to us and the Prophet ﷺ has taught us from his own teachings as well. That the Prophet ﷺ, once he was talking to Aisha radiallahu anha, and he told Aisha radiallahu anha, O Aisha, on the day of judgment, if you want to meet me on the day of judgment. And Aisha radiallahu anha is his wife. Is the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now listen to this Message of the Prophet of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ says what? That, O oh Aisha, on the day of judgment, if you want to meet me on the day of Qiyamah, right? it's, 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 it's already known that she is going to be with the Prophet ﷺ. But no, it's not that easy. The Prophet ﷺ is teaching us something here, that it's not that easy. Just because you are connected to somebody doesn't mean you're going to go to Jannah right away. A lot of times we have this misconception. Oh, I, I know this person, I know this, you know, uh, uh, this uh, great Imam and this great uh, scholar, and inshallah, just because I know him, Allah will also take me to the day, to, to Allah will also send me to Jannah. No, you have to make your own effort. 
The Prophet ﷺ is teaching us here this. That Aisha عنها, being, his wa- being his wife, the Prophet ﷺ is saying, Oh Aisha, on the day of judgment, if you want to be with me, if you want to meet me on the day of Qiyamah, then live your life like a traveler. The Prophet ﷺ said what? Live your life like a traveler. The way a traveler packs his bags and he only carries those things which are easy for him to take from point A to point B. He doesn't carry anything extra. No, access, no, no extra baggages. Right? He knows that it's going to be difficult for him. It's going to be hard for him right? to carry those things. Likewise, your dunya, this, 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 this world that you're in, this is your traveling. You're going to the Akhirah. You're going towards the hereafter. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Live like a traveler. The way a traveler may wear his clothing, his garment, and he doesn't take it off until it's torn apart. You come sometimes into a situation where you are traveling and you've, kept, you've, you've, you've packed only one or two pairs. And even the pairs you've packed, you know, they're really messed up. They're maybe torn from here and there and you're like, oh, it's fine, you know, I'm going to go home next week, inshallah. Right? You think like that. You don't think that, oh, you know what, I'm going to stay here, I'm going to design a nice house here, I'm going to have my bedroom here and this suite here and that here. No, you don't look at it like that. The Prophet ﷺ said, likewise, the way a traveler is, كُن فِي الدُّنْيَا كَأَنَّكَ غَرِيبٌ أَوْ عَابِرُ سَبِيلٍ Right? Live in this dunya as a stranger or a person who is just walking by, a person who is just crossing a road, a person who is just traveling by. He doesn't stand there in that, bus, in that bus stop, you're waiting for a bus stop and now you're thinking, SubhanAllah, let me make a nice pa- palace here for myself and you know, I'm going to make my bathroom like this and my room like this and my walk-in closet like that. No, he doesn't think like that's a bus stop. I'm going to stand here for 5-10 minutes max and that's it, I'm out on my way back home. <coughs> He lives his life like that. The Prophet ﷺ said the same thing. Oh Aisha, if you want to meet me on the day of judgment, know that this life is just like that. Know that this life is just like that. 60 years, 50 years of your life is going to pass by like that. Live your life like a traveler. Live your life like a traveler. And then the Prophet ﷺ has taught us that do not emotionally connect yourself with dunya. Yes, you are in this dunya. Right? As the scholars, they tell us and, uh, in Riyadh al-Salihin, one of the very great books of hadith, uh, Alama Nawawi rahmatullah alayhi, he writes a very beautiful poem in the beginning of Riyadh al-Salihin. Alama Nawawi rahmatullah alayhi says that yes, we are all travelers in this dunya. We're crossing this dunya. So he says, take the example of a ship. Take the example of a ship. As long as the ship stays above the water, what happens? It sails. It goes to, it goes to its destination. It gets there. But the minute the water starts to sink in, comes inside of the ship, what happens? It drowns. That's it. It goes away. Likewise with us, we are in this dunya, yes, we are travelers. Emotionally, do not connect yourself with the dunya. You are a ship, you are sailing. As long as you do not connect yourself with the dunya, you are good to go. You'll be traveling, you'll, good, you'll, you'll get to the akhirah. But once the love of the dunya starts to penetrate and comes inside of your heart, then that is where the, all the destructions happen. And that's why the ulama, the scholars, they write, that why is it so bad? Why is it so... Uh, 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 such a great harm up upon a person and the heart of a person to accumulate dunya. Why is it so hard for us? They give us three reasons. Three reasons. And inshallah, I'm going to conclude with this. They give us three reasons as to why it is bad and it is harmful upon the heart of a person to accumulate more and more dunya. Right? Today we see, we, each and every single one of us, we're after this, this battle. Right? Who can have more? I, oh, he has this, I need to have better. Right? He has this thing in his life, he has this car, I need to have a better car. He has this house, I need to have a better house. So they say three, three harms, three reasons as to why you shouldn't accumulate. Number one, is that when you start to accumulate and bring in more and more world, and attract more and more wealth, it pushes you towards sin and ma'asiyah. It pushes you towards the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you accumulate more and more, it pushes you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. That's why in one narration it comes that once Umar radiallahu anhu, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he went to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, a great giant of Islam, he goes to visit the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the narration it comes, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was resting at the time. He was resting at the time. And in the narration, it also comes that the bedding of the Prophet ﷺ was made of straw. You know, the, 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 the straw that we see, it's, it's, it's a little rough of a material. And upon that, there was a layer of leather. So that was the uh, mat and the bedding of Rasulullah 
And subhanAllah, today we invest and we, you know, we, we uh, pay so much for all types of mattresses. Right? A mattress that can keep me cool and warm at the same time. My feet should be cold and, you know, my upper body should be warm and vice versa. We just invest thousands of dollars. And then what happens? We don't get it for Fajr. Right? It's a sad reality. Right? And, and, and it's, it's an eye-opener for each and every single one of us. The Prophet Wasallam, how is he laying down? It's just a small piece of leather and, on top, and, and, and beneath it is a straw. So the Prophet Wasallam, now when he turns towards Umar ibn al-Khattab because he was coming to greet him, then the narration that comes, there was the atharat, there was the effects of that mat that had left upon the back of Rasulullah Wasallam. There were some imprints upon the back of Rasulullah so Umar radiallahu anhu sees this and he starts to cry. In the narration of Abaka Umar ibn al-Khattab, he starts to weep. So the Prophet says, Ma yubikika ya Umar. Umar, what's making you cry? What's making you weep, Umar? So he says, Ya Nabi Allah, you are the Prophet of Allah. You own the Akhir and you own this dunya, Ya, ya Nabi Allah. Whatever you want, Allah will grant it to you, Ya Nabi Allah. Why is it that I see the, 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 the Romans and the Persians, uh, you know, enjoying their lives and the bounties of this dunya, and I see you in this state, Ya Nabi Allah. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, grants us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also opens up the bounties and these luxuries upon your ummah and upon you. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said something very beautiful. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, O oh Umar, awa fi shakkin anta ya Umar? In the narration it comes, O oh Umar, are you still in doubt? The Prophet sallallahu said what? Umar, are you still in doubt? Do you still doubt the akhirah? Ama tarda? أن تكون لهم الدنيا ولنا الآخرة أما ترضى أن تكون لهم الدنيا ولنا الآخرة Aren't you happy with the decision and the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for them is this dunya but for, the, for us is the akhirah This dunya we're only here for a, few, for, for a few time period for a little bit of a time but for us is the akhirah the everlasting forever and ever So why are you still in that O Umar? Why are you still in that O Umar? So number one, when you have more and more, and you try to accumulate more and more, what happens? It pushes you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, the second harm, when you try to accumulate a lot of wealth. Even if you spend it upon lawful things, mubah, as they say in the Arabic language, things which are lawful, things which are permissible, that you can do, even if you spend it upon that. Emotionally, you get so attached to those luxuries that you do not take time out to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Am I right or wrong? Emotionally, you become so connected to those things that I need to have my bed like this. I need to have my bathroom like that. I need to have my food like this. You become so picky. You become so picky upon these things that what? It keeps you, it keeps you whole and it keeps you in this, in this, in, in this cage of, of just going after the dunya and earning the dunya. Keeps you after that, one step after the other. Because you don't, you don't want those luxuries to be taken away from you. So what do you do? Day in and out. You're thinking about those. Day in and day out. Oh, if I lose my job, this is what's going to happen to me. If I lose this, this is what I'm, If I don't make this much money, oh, I'm, well, I'm not going to be able to eat this from this restaurant or from that restaurant. The second thing, the second harm. And the third harm is, it takes you away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Accumulation of the wealth. What happens? You become a businessman. Two, you have two, two, two stores and you have three and then you have four and you have five businesses, six businesses. What does it do to you? Your entire mindset, your entire thinking, your entire focus is driven on those things. It's after those things. It doesn't keep you away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why it is very, very, very important that this disease of being stingy and being miserly and having this connection with this wealth, we try our best to remove it. Because a heart, the, the, the heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and I, the only thing that it should have is the muhabba and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? The minute you have love for something else inside of it, the muhabba of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts to diminish. It starts to decrease. So that's why it is very, very important that this heart Allah ta'ala has given to us, we keep it pure and we keep it only and only in love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing else. May Allah ta'ala give me all of us the ability to do so, inshaAllah.